So it is consisting of Vx, Vy, and Vz component in Cartesian. In cylindrical, there are Vr, V theta, and Vz component. These three components combined, you should get one single vector. And vector would have size and direction. All right? If velocity component y and z are equal to zero, that means your net vector should have the same direction as x-axis, right? OK. Now let's get back to this. If I have, let's say, water in between two large plates, if I have big plate perpendicular to the screen here, on the bottom and on top here, and in the middle there's a water, at t equal to zero, I mean, if before t equal to zero, everything stands still, there's no movement. At t equal to zero, you start pulling the bottom plate from the left to the right. If you pull this plate, this is a plate, a solid plate, with constant velocity v, what should happen? Any idea? If you pull this plate to the right, what would happen? Do you think the water here would flow? Can you, have you tried this? Um, Let's say, suppose you have a duct Okay, this is a duct If you fill it with water This is water If the water stands still, everything's still Suppose you have a piece of wood here putting in water, partly submerged. This part is submerged. Okay, imagine. If you pull this piece of wood in one direction, what would happen? Does the water flow? If I pull this way, of course it will flow, right? For sure, because the water is stirred. But if I pull along the length of the piece of metal or piece of wood here, does it affect water? Suppose the thickness of this piece is so small, it's negligibly small. Do you think water would be disturbed? Anybody here says something would take place in the water. Water would be flowing somehow. Anybody? Or anybody here says nothing would be disturbed. According to Newton law, when you, when you have a system at stable, stable system, and you apply force to it, what would happen? That should be something, right? There should be acceleration, F equal to ma. Now, if I pull this piece of metal or wood at constant velocity, that means there is no force. Do you think the water here would flow along with the piece of wood here? I'm not sure that you have tried this before. And suppose you have you can try it at home. You have a bottle, bottle of water. You put a straw in there. 
if you somehow use your finger to put on top of this straw, the water will stay right this level, right? Suppose you pull this straw up, what happened? The water here will flow, would be moved upward, right? You can release your finger and somehow try to pull this straw up and downward. If your, your, the rhythm here synchronized with the rhythm that you pull this straw, you can draw water up here. Have you tried that? No? Try that, it's fun. <laughs> Back to this problem, if you pull this piece of metal along the length here, the water around here will be disturbed and there will be flow. It will be dragged. Water would, would be dragged in this direction. Okay? Have you heard what we call no slip condition? In unit operation one, have you learned about no slip condition? No? No? Okay. Now, what happened in under no slip condition is whenever you have interface between solid and fluid, okay? Where is interface between solid and fluid? Right there and right there. At these interfaces, the velocity of fluid should be equal to velocity of the solid. That's called no slip condition. So for no slip condition, velocity of solid, oh, velocity of fluid at the interface, at solid fluid interface should equal to velocity of solid itself. This is condition called no slip condition. So if this condition is applied, that means whenever you pull this piece of solid to the right, water right at the interface here should have velocity v as well. Okay? So at first, let me use right color. At first, at time equal to zero, water at other levels still not moved. Only at this piece at the interface is moved under no slip condition. Okay? At t greater than zero, what happened is, as long as you pull, you still keep pulling the bottom plate with continuous uh, velocity, the velocity here would remain V. Now, you will notice that water right above it would have velocity as well. It starts to move at time greater than zero. But water here, or up here may stand very still at initial time. The velocity would increase corresponding to the height from the bottom plate. Okay? The higher the position, the lower the velocity. All right? And if you keep pulling until everything reach steady, what you have would be something like this. Now, if you connect, I mean, each of these arrow represent velocity at this particular position. The shorter vectors shows you that velocity is slow. The longer does mean it's faster, okay? If you somehow connect this dot, this is called velocity profile. Okay? So as time's going longer and longer until you reach T 
approaching infinite or long enough. What you have would be something like this. The velocity profile would turn to be linear. Okay? However, you should notice that at steady state, velocity at this point is still equal to V as long as you're still pulling this plate at the constant speed of V because of the no slip condition. Up here, velocity is equal to zero because the top plate here remains stationary. So under no slip condition, fluid solid interface, the velocity here is supposed to equal to velocity of the solid, which is zero in this case. All right. Now, if I set the vertical direction here to be y direction, and horizontal direction here is x, x going positive toward the right, okay? Now, let me ask you this. Water here move in which direction? X, Y, or Z? X, right? Water should have velocity in X direction. Does it have velocity in Y direction? No. There is no Y velocity, right? So I can say that velocity in y direction equal to zero. Velocity in x direction is not zero. Okay? Now, in this course, we will consider only system at steady state because simply, simply because unsteady state is too complicated mathematically. Okay? So at steady state, you will have velocity in x direction, we call this one Vx. You should notice that Vx here chained with respect to y, right? It's chained with respect to position in y direction. As you go higher, velocity is smaller or slower. That means Vx here is function of y. Okay?